What's up everybody? Bruce Epus here. Happy Saturday morning. It's awesome to be back. Cheers. Today, we're going to bottle the hop samplers and we're just gonna talk a little bit about that beginning homebrew mentality when things are still super exciting, when you're loving what you're doing. I was talking to my neighbor one day when I was having problems with my keg about a year ago, a year and a half ago. He came over and he was helping me with it and he's like, yeah, I used to homebrew. I just got so tired of cleaning. And how many of us can relate to that? Or some sort of story like that? I got tired of blank. Okay, I think most of us can probably relate. Some of us, I mean, yeah, cleaning sucks, but I continue to clean because I continue to brew. I mean, it's just part of the process. I don't hate cleaning so much that it would ever keep me from brewing a beer. Man, I slept on my neck wrong last night. I'm sure some of you can relate to that. I have very limited mobility. It's about as far as I can go to the left. Ugh. That's why I'm drinking a beer right now. I always have to come up with some new excuse. No, I don't. So, really what gave me the idea, I mean, yeah, I need to bottle some hop samplers, but what gave me the idea to talk about that beginning homebrew mentality when things are still exciting was last weekend when I did the Pliny the Elder. Man. So, I open up the kit and realize there's no muzzle in bags. So, the brew shop doesn't open till 10.30 around here, and I like to get an early start. The problem was, I went to Ace to try to find some cheesecloth, but it had kind of a sticky coating on it. I was like, I don't want to drop that in boiling water or hot water. Like, who knows what that sticky substance is. I'll just wait till the brew shop opens. Traffic sucked. I didn't get over there till about one o'clock or sorry noon probably. And then I get home, get my sanitizer water made up and all of that. And I got my muslin bags. Well, I start going through my kit, and I'm already steeping by this point. I'm steeping my grains. I'm steeping my whole hops. And I realized they didn't send me yeast. But I also remember when I ordered the kit, I said, I clicked the little box that said, don't worry, I've got my own yeast. Because I like to buy my yeast fresh. I didn't want it to be shipped in the heat. So that was my bad. I had to drive clear back over to the brew shop. An hour later, I get home thinking the whole time that this thing is going to be up to a boil by the time I get home. So yeah, I guess my steeping was done and I was bringing it up to a boil. So not only am I stressed, like I've had to be to the brew shop twice already and I, I got work to do at the house, but I thought I was probably gonna get a boil over by the time I got home, cause that's happened before. I dropped a carboy once in the middle of the brew day while cleaning it. I had to go to the brew shop and buy a new carboy and when I got home, my wort was boiling over. So I really feared that. Got home, it was almost to the boil. I mean, perfect timing, absolutely perfect timing. But I was brewing and I was like, man, this is fun. This is fun, this is fun. And if you ever have to tell yourself three times, you might not be having fun. So that's why I'm definitely going to start doing the small batch beers. I know I've been talking about it a lot. Five gallons. It just, the brew day is so long. And while I enjoy it, I'd rather handcraft a nice small batch that I can have just a few of instead of having to deal with five gallons of anything really. Honestly, I'd rather have a six pack of everything than five gallons of anything. So, 
that's why I plan to start doing that. And it's really gonna, it's really gonna let the love back into the brewing process, you know? I honestly think that one gallon batches are gonna allow me to find that love for brewing again that I had at the very beginning. I still love brewing five gallon batches, but not as much as I used to. When I'm doing the one gallon batches, I think I'm gonna have all the love back, okay? That's the goal and I'll bottle them and it'll be great. They'll be nice handcrafted all grain beers and I just have a few. So if I give you one, I really like you. I guess that's what that means. And I'd love to mail you guys some homebrew. Hit me up. Beerlifedeath at gmail.com I'll mail you some homebrew if you want to try some. Send me an email. Give me your address. Find me on Instagram at BruceCephas. Let's bottle some beer. Those DME beers I made up with three different hop varieties. We're going to go ahead and get those in bottles today. I've been putting it off. I haven't been able to get to the brew shop. I had, I went without cleaner for the longest time. I didn't do any brewing without cleaner, but since I didn't have any and I couldn't get over to the brew shop, I, I was just so busy. I haven't been able to bottle those hop samplers. So we're gonna go ahead and bottle some today. Got the pop top bottles up there that we're gonna use. And it's a little coincidental that we're talking about beginning brewing and that mentality and how fun it should be and how easy we should make it on ourselves and we're bottling a beer a thing that a lot of advanced home brewers don't do you know at some point it seems like we all keg or keg but today we're gonna bottle okay and i better get used to it if i'm gonna start doing small batch beers again okay let's get into it cheers everybody hope you enjoy today All right, cheers everybody. So I had every intention, cheers. Found these in the bottom of my fridge, forgot I had them. Big web gold nail, it's hard to go wrong. I had every intention of filming the bottling portion and kind of talking during, hanging out, but maybe I shouldn't have started off this video talking about all the stuff that went wrong last brew day. My bottle filler here, since those hop samplers had so many hops in the bottom, I clogged this with hops very quickly. So really what I had to do was pop this thing off and just use my auto siphon to just pour the beer into the bottles hurry up and switch them out um didn't exactly go as planned and it was way more of a hands-on process than i expected it to be way more i had to be way more timely time aware i'd hurry so we didn't exactly get to hang out but we can talk beginner mentality because this shit happens a lot when you're a beginner and apparently a lot when you're not a beginner 
never put yourself out there saying don't sweat the small stuff and it's all small stuff if you don't mean it and if you can't say the same thing when everything's falling to pieces okay so i had to remind myself of that a few times today it's fine it's gonna be fine i got three great hop samplers out of it i mean three more than three total but three different hops i got samplers so what can i complain about had to pour a bucket of water on my garage floor sweep it out get all the beer off the floor had to do a little bit more cleaning than i had anticipated but what's the worry next time i think instead of fermenting my gallon batch in the jug like this I think I'll ferment in this because I can hook my hose and my bottler there onto the spigot and just turn it and not have to deal with the auto siphon at all. Okay, and you see the hops and the true will stay down here at the bottom and the spigot's a little ways up so I won't get all that sediment down there into the hose and the bottler. So I love this thing. I think this thing is one of the best things I've ever gotten for small batches. Can't beat a bottling bucket, honestly. I feel like to use an auto siphon, here's the problem. If you have this hooked on one end and the auto siphon on the other, you kind of need two hands to run the auto siphon. But if this is hooked up at the other end, this thing has to be depressed to let beer flow through. So in the past, I've pumped away at that auto siphon before and felt tremendous pressure. Been like, why is it not flowing? Well, this has to be depressed down in the bottle, okay? So it kind of takes three hands. If you know a better way, let me know. My better way is just hooking it up to this and not needing the auto siphon at all. But if you have someone there, like my wife before has held it in the bottle and she's been able to help me, but she's resting right now and i had only two hands i'm only one man sue me cheers i won't say the process was fun but it's definitely fun to sit down after have a cold one and talk beer and talk success and persevering through difficulty because that's what we do as home brewers. We persevere, we get a beer in the bucket, and we pray it turns out good. It could have gone far worse. I mean, I could have ended up with no beer. I will say as far as bottling goes, I do like the carb drops. They're a little bit more expensive than buying an ounce of priming sugar. So you just drop one little drop into 12 ounces and instead of, you know, mixing your ounce or five ounces, I think for five gallons into a batch of beer in order to bottle, I do like the carb drops for convenience, but that's here nor there. This wasn't exactly a bottling video. I mean, I wanted to film the bottling process cause you know, there's always someone who hasn't done it and could get something out of it. But there's so many videos on YouTube. There's nothing that you really have to make because someone can find it somewhere. But I like to be there for my people, you know? If you have questions about bottling, find another video. <laughs> Feel free to hit me up always. Beerlifedeath at gmail.com <sighs> If there's one thing I've learned in my years of brewing, that you really don't have to do anything. I mean, and the Brewlosophy guys have done a lot to prove that you can really do anything and it's really kind of hard to mess up a beer. I mean, there's always someone who can do it. Hopefully it's not me, knock on wood. But I've definitely had to pour a couple down the yard drain. It's fine, we've all been there. Cheers everybody. I'll be back here to try the hop samplers here in a couple weeks once they're carbonated. 
We'll sit down and we'll taste them. We'll drink three beers that day. We got an Eldorado, a Mount Hood, and a Zappa. That ought to be a lot of fun. We'll see you back here for 24 ounce Tuesday here in a couple days, three days. That's about it. We'll see you then. Cheers, everybody. I've always heard it's bad luck to say cheers and not take a drink. I hate when people do that. Cheers. I sit there. I thought I had less beer left in here than I had. Cheers. Have a good one. Enjoy your weekend.